Disney Cruise Line, booking your first cruise. Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Anne with some more of your Disney needs, and today we're gonna talk all about booking that first Disney cruise. Thank you all so much for subscribing. We've gotten a lot of new subscribers in the last couple of weeks, and that really does help me out a lot. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. You can ring that little bell. It'll let you know when we have any new information. So booking your first Disney cruise can seem rather intimidating. I'm hoping to help you with that. I'm just gonna go through the timeline of activities. There is so much information on Disney cruising, you could honestly watch videos for days. So I know I'm not gonna get everything in this video, but hopefully it'll be helpful to you, and here we go. So first thing you wanna do with booking a Disney cruise, obviously, is look at the prices, look at the cruises, and make your decision. I'm actually not gonna go into that too much. I will a little bit later about the four night versus the seven night, and I'm just gonna talk very generally here. Booking your first Disney cruise, there's a few things you need to consider. How long you have off from school or work, what the dates are that will work for you, and of course your budget. If you can cruise during school season, you're gonna be able to cruise for a cheaper price. The summer cruises all have quite a bit of an increase from off-season cruising, so that's just something to keep in mind. Choosing your first Disney cruise is a very personal decision. You need to find out what works well for you and your family. Our first Disney cruise, we went three nights. My son was not really excited at all to be in the middle of the ocean, so we chose a three night that had port stops both days, so there were no sea days. And that way, from morning until late afternoon, the ship was docked in port. So while it, there was ocean on one side, there was land on the other, and that just made him a lot more calm. If you're prone to seasickness, you might want to check into a three or four night cruise instead of a seven night cruise to start with. Get any medications you think you might need for motion sickness or seasickness. See bands, bonine, dramamine, etc. and then just go enjoy the cruise. Another thing people consider is where to go. Bahamas, Caribbean, Europe, the Mediterranean. Disney Cruise has a lot of locations that they visit. A couple of times we've chosen based on itinerary and a couple of times we've chosen based on number of sea days and which ship we were going on. Some trips we just really wanted to enjoy the ship. Some trips we also like to get out and explore the ports. You just have to decide what's best for you and your family. So diving into it. First up, do you book your Disney Cruise directly through Disney Cruise Line or do you get a travel agent? Again, it's your personal preference. Some travel agents will give onboard credit when you book with them. Those are typically larger agencies and the credits are based on the cost of your cruise, so a higher cost will get you a little more onboard credit. If you go with a travel agent, you cannot contact Disney Cruise Line for information about your cruise. They will tell you to contact your agent. And I would just verify what the travel agent does for you. There should not be any cost to work with a travel agent. They also will not have cheaper prices than Disney Cruise will. If you're trying to get a good deal on a Disney Cruise, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. They don't actually decrease the prices very often. Typically, the release date is the lowest price you'll see for a cruise. Once in a while, if they do not sell as much as they would like, then they will offer military discounts, Florida resident discounts. After the paid in full date, they will sometimes put a guaranteed cabin rate out there and it will be for a little bit lower price. It will have to be paid in full at the time of booking and they'll tell you the actual stateroom number as you get closer to your sale date. There's a couple of other ways to save a little bit on a Disney cruise. Both Target and I believe it's BJ's have programs where if you buy from them, they'll give you a little bit extra percentage off. You have to have their specific card to do it, I believe. If you do that, you can get 5% off the cost of the Disney cards with their discount. The catch here is that you have to save every one of those card numbers and you'll have to enter every one of them in for when you pay for your cruise. If you do this, I suggest getting an Excel spreadsheet and keeping it very clear what you've done and where the money is. If they give you any discounts at all, it will go back to the form of payment, which would be one of those mini gift cards. Just an idea for that. The very best way to get a good price for Disney Cruise is just to book it as soon as it comes out. You can book as soon as the new dates are released. It requires a 20% deposit to hold the reservation, and then you can make payments on it until it's time for it to be paid in full. Paid in full dates are either 90 or 120 days before the date of the cruise, depending on which type of cruise you have. Up until your paid in full date, you're able to fully cancel and get a refund for your cruise if for some reason you need to change it. After paid in full date, that changes obviously and you'll have to look at their policy for that. That's why you also wanna consider travel insurance. If you book travel insurance when you book your cruise, that can add you some more protection. And just look into those details so you know what you're getting. Once in a while, Disney Cruise will have a 10% reservation rate instead of the typical 20%. That's usually around February or March. 
but as cruising picks up again, who knows what that will be like. Also, just a thing to consider, if you're booking your cruise in the next year or so, a lot of Disney cruisers got a future cruise credit of 25% of the cost of their fare. I believe that all of those future cruise credits have led to some increased prices right now for Disney Cruises. Disney Cruise is always expensive. It is a luxury item. However, it seems to be a little bit more expensive over the next year, and I think that's because of those future cruise credits but time will tell. Okay, so you book your cruise, you can make monthly payments on that, check into travel insurance. The earlier you get it, the better the price it is from my understanding. Once you've booked, I highly suggest doing some research. There's a lot available on a Disney cruise and the more informed you are, I think it just helps everything go a little bit easier. It did for me. Once you've booked your cruise, if you wanna join up with other people that will be on your cruise, you can go to the Facebook group, Disney Cruising. They keep lists in there for the Facebook group for every individual cruise that Disney Cruise Line has. Not every single one, but almost all of them will have a Facebook group. Within that Facebook group, people like to share images to make their own magnets for their doors, share an excitement, packing tips, port tips, etc. It just gives you a group of people to communicate with that are just as excited about a Disney cruise as you are. Within that group, they would typically have what was called a fish extender list. Fish extenders were done prior to 2020. Basically, there's a little fish clip outside your door where they can leave information for you. Cruisers would make a pocket organizer and hang it on that fish. And then there would be a secret Santa type gift exchange with other people in the group. You actually do know who they are, so it's not secret, but that's the best way I know to describe it. So prior to 2020, they would, there would be those gift exchanges, pixie dusting, recipe exchanges, magnet exchanges, just unique ways to add some more fun to your Disney Cruise. For the Magic Staycations, Disney has specifically said that fish extenders are not allowed. So I don't know how that may or may not change in the future, just something to look into. You can also prepay your tips. Tips are a suggested $13 per person per day. And these tips are for your room host, your head server, your main server, and your assistant server at dinner. We always bring more money than that. That doesn't seem to cover what they do for us at all. But those are the suggested tips and we do like to prepay those. Just makes it a little bit easier at the end of the cruise. Alcohol is another thing people like to know about with Disney Cruise Line. Many other cruise lines have alcohol packages and Disney Cruise does not have that. They do have some wine packages you can purchase, but they're not discounted. But they do also have a carry on policy for alcohol. Most cruises do not allow you to carry any alcohol on the ship. Disney Cruise Line will allow you to each adult 21 and over may carry on one bottle of wine or six beers per port. So you got to be 21. You can do it at every port, but you got to make sure you carry it on. So that can help a bit if you're a wine drinker or a beer drinker. They also have special glasses that are available on the first day of the cruise for both the drink of the day and beer. They're refill type glasses and it just gets you a little bit lower price. They have a prohibited items list. Make sure you check into this. Things like an Xbox is not allowed on the ship. They'll take it. They'll give it back to you at the end of the cruise, of course, but you can't carry that on. There's also some things like extension cords are not allowed either. So make sure you look at that. Another couple of things Disney does differently is casinos and dining. Disney Cruise Line does not have any casinos on any of their ships. They do have bingo. It's typically about $40, I believe, and they have a pot that ends with thousands by the end of the cruise. I've absolutely heard of people winning these. We played bingo once and it was a lot of fun. They just threw in a lot of Disney silliness with the process. And we won a gift bag with like a cup, a keychain, a few things like that. It was a lot of fun. And dining on Disney Cruise Line is a set time. They have early or late dining, approximately 5.45 p.m. and 8.15 p.m. Typically, cruisers with young children will want that earlier dining time. Disney Cruise also will seat your family with other families unless you request that they don't. The first cruise we went on, I was a single mom. It was me and my son, and they sat us with two other single moms and their sons of the same age. So that was fun. After that, we requested our own table because we just wanted to enjoy dinner to ourselves, and they were able to do that for us. So if it's important for you to sit with just your family, make sure and put in that request. It's not guaranteed, but it's certainly worth a try, and we've gotten it every time we have tried. The adult areas, if you're cruising without kids, Disney can be a lot of fun. They have adult areas. You can be in the atrium with a whole lot of noise going on dance party with characters, kids everywhere. You just walk over a little bit and then you're in the adult section with the bars. It's so peaceful and quiet.
quiet in there. I think it's the way they've arranged it. At nighttime, when the nightclub's going, it's not as quiet, but that's when you expect it to be a little loud. They also do silent DJ, so once in a while it is quiet. Noise can be a thing for me, so it's really great just to be able to step away that easily. We really love the adult areas. They've got the pool, the hot tubs, Cove Cafe. There's also the spa and a rainforest room that's connected to the spa. In addition, they have the adult area with the bars and the nightclub. We really love Match Your Mate. That's a fun game show that they do. They have game shows that they do for families as well in the D lounge typically during the day, but you can absolutely stick to adult areas if you want to. The only place where you would have to go that doesn't have adult only options are things like the deck parties and the movie theater and the stage show. Those are for everybody. And in main dining as well, there's children there. But if you really wanted an 18 and over cruise, you could just stick the adult areas, reserve Polo dinner, Remy dinner, utilize free 24 hour room service. There's a lot of ways to enjoy Disney Cruise without children. And obviously it's a lot of fun for the kids as well. My son's an adult, so we really enjoy all the adult areas. They'll also have cooking classes with like a little wine as a taster. They'll have adult specific trivia through the decade. Just a lot of fun. You'll want to make sure and download the Disney Navigator app prior to your cruise. I highly suggest doing that as soon as you book your cruise. There is a countdown in there that tells you how many sleeps until it's time to leave and that's a lot of fun to watch. It also has your itinerary, your summary, how much you've paid on your bill so far, when that's due for paid in full, etc. So I definitely recommend downloading that as soon as you book your cruise. You can do your online check-in through that app. You can select your port excursions, Apollo brunch or dinner. You can do all that through the app when it's time for you to check in. That's typically 75 days before you sail for new cruisers and you will absolutely want to have that app once you get on the ship. Once you get on board it will have all the activities that will be happening. They used to have what is called a navigator. It's a piece of paper that shows highlights of your cruise like the drink of the day, what port you'll be in, temperatures, and then all the activities for all the age groups. They'll have a specific line for edge, for the preteens, vibe for 14 to 17. They have a specific lines for adults only. This paper navigator I don't believe is available anymore. We'll see how things go as we get back to cruising. All of those cruise details from the navigator are on the app and they're a little bit easier to see on the app. I really love those paper navigators but the app really does have all the details. You can also heart your favorite ones. It'll send you a little reminder. Hey time to go see Mickey. You can chat with people in your group from the app and it will also have the menus for all your dining. The nursery is for six months to three years old and you do have to pay extra for that. You need to make a reservation and the cost is per hour. So make sure you check into all that. I'm pretty sure that when you do your online check-in, there's some documents that you need to fill out for kids clubs or nursery. The kids clubs are included with the cost of your cruise. The clubs are for ages three to 11, 12 to 14, and 14 to 17. They really do have some very cool security measures in place. Just make sure you look into all of that before it's time to do your online check-in. So check in online. What is that? We keep mentioning it. So that's what you do. You make sure and do your check-in online 75 days prior to sale. The activities that you might want to select will be listed there. They might not all be available. When it's time for your check-in, make sure and get online at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You're going to want to select your port arrival time. You're going to want to make sure and let them know about the kids club or nursery. You can select Apollo, brunch, or dinner. Brunch will not be available if you don't have any sea days though. You can also book things like alcohol tastings and port excursions. If any of these are completely booked up, just keep a watch on them. People will oftentimes make changes and then that reservation will be available again. If there's something you just weren't able to get before you got on the ship, then as soon as you get on, go straight to guest services, tell them what you need and they can help you out. There might be some reservations available. It's absolutely worth checking. Four nights versus seven nights is another consideration. They do have four night cruises that will have a sea day. They also have four night cruises with no sea days. So if a sea day is important to you, just make sure and look at those itineraries. A seven night cruise, especially to the Bahamas or the Caribbean, will typically have at least a couple of sea days within those seven nights. Your rotational dining rotates you through the three restaurants. Your servers stay with you at every restaurant. And if you have a four night, one of those nights is typically the pirate night. So they'll redo the restaurant as a pirate theme. And then if you have seven nights, you'll rotate through those restaurants again. You will not have the same menu though. So for for example, if you're on the Wonder and you're on a seven night, you're going to eat at Tiana's Place twice. You might have Tiana's Place for your pirate night as well. Then you would have two nights at Animator's Palette and two nights at Triton's. There's also some fun theming in these restaurants. Animator's Palette obviously is based on the animation. 
and has some fun stuff that happens there. And Tiana's place is based on the princess and the frog. Tiana is there. They have the crawfish crooners on stage that will perform. It's just a really fun themed restaurant. Seven Night Cruises will also have the Captain's Gala, where you can meet the captains in the atrium. Sometimes they will have some cocktails there available as well. They'll have the Polo Brunch available on sea days. So if there's more sea days, more opportunity for you to get the Polo Brunch if you didn't get it ahead of time. They also have character breakfast. Also on the Seven Nights is when you can have the opportunity to do the Royal Court Royal Tea Party. It's a lot of fun for your princess. It's definitely an extra fee and it's not small. So check into that if that's important to you guys. And the last thing we have here is characters. There's a princess meet and greet that you can reserve when you do your online booking. It does not cost anything, but you do need to make the reservation. Again, if it's not there, keep watching. Go ask as soon as you get on board if you don't have it yet. See if they can help you with that. In the atrium, they'll have four princesses and you'll stand in one line and then just go across to see all four princesses. So that's a really great experience for your little princess. They also have tons of characters. This will also be on your Navigator app. So just check and see where they'll be. They have the main Fab Five. Plus sometimes they'll have Marvel or Star Wars, especially if you're doing a Marvel or Star Wars Day at Sea. And the characters will dress up depending on where you are. If it's formal night, they'll be in their formal attire. If you're going to Disney's private island, Castaway Key, they'll be dressed in their beach attire. Even Olaf is out there once in a while. Okay, and here's our pro tip. If you're going on a seven night cruise or longer that has the formal night, get your family dressed up. Go down there and let the Disney photographers take your photos and then use those for your Christmas cards. These are all the first time considerations. I know it's a lot. Let us know in the comments below what you're most excited for on your first Disney cruise or your next Disney cruise. And remember, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please go ahead and do that. It really helps us a lot. Ring that little bell. It'll let you know when we have any new information. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you real soon with some more Disney's.